The University of Iowa is located on the homelands of the Ojibwe and Anishinaabe, Bahoji, Iowa, Kickapoo, Kickapoo, Ometmanewak, Menominee, Miamika, Miami, Natuchi, Missouri, Omaha, Omaha, Wazaji, Osage, Jawer, Oto, Odawa, Ottawa, Ponca, Ponca, Potawatomi, Nishnave, Potawatomi, Nishquaki, Nemahaki, Sakawaki, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, Sanish, Nubaka, Nueta, and the Ho Chunk Nations. The following tribal nations the Omaha tribe of Nebraska and Iowa, Ponca tribe of Nebraska, Sac and Fox Nation of the Mississippi and Iowa, and Winnebago tribe of Nebraska continue to thrive in the state of Iowa, and we continue to acknowledge them. As an academic institution, it is our responsibility to acknowledge the sovereignty and the traditional territories of these tribal nations and the treaties that were used to remove these tribal nations and the histories of dispossession that have allowed for the growth of this institution since 1847. Consistent with the university's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Understanding the historical and current experiences of Native peoples will help inform the work we do collectively as a university to engage in building relationships through academic scholarship, collaborative partnerships, community service, enrollment and retention efforts, acknowledging our past, our present, and future Native nations. Well, welcome to the Stanley Museum of Art's Grant Wood Fellow Talk, a session exploring contemporary regionalism in musical contexts with Josh Henderson. I'm Kimberly Datchett, Curator of Learning and Engagement at the Stanley Museum of Art. Before we begin tonight's talk, I want to acknowledge that we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Grant Wood Fellowship Program. The program has hosted 30 artists since 2011. I'd also like to highlight some upcoming events. You can see Josh live on Monday, April 4th at 7.30 p.m. in the Stark Opera Studio at Boxton Music Building. This performance is free and open to the public. All are also welcome to the seventh biennial Grant Wood Symposium, a home and studio of one's own, examining the intersections of artists' homes, creativity, and identity. This event will take place April 8th through the 10th at Art Building West and at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. And on April 7th, the Stanley is welcoming Ian Berry, Dayton Director of the Tang Teaching Museum, to give a talk at 7 p.m. in 240 Art Building West. Tonight's event is closed captioned, you can turn on the captioning by clicking on the closed captioning button at the bottom of your window or clicking view subtitles. Throughout the program, you can comment using the chat feature and put your questions for Josh in the Q&A box. We'd like to thank Jim Hayes for his support of the arts, including the Grant Wood Art Colony and the Stanley Museum of Art. Josh Henderson has a multifaceted career as a cross-genre violinist, violist, and composer. As a classical soloist, he has performed with the Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra, China Performing Arts Broadcast Troupe, Starling Chamber Orchestra, and Accent X Festival Orchestra, among others, and in venues such as Carnegie Hall, the Kennedy Center, and the Forbidden City Concert Hall of Beijing. Carving out a reputation for his dynamic performances in jazz, rock, hip hop, and country fiddle, Josh is a founding member of Warp Trio, and has led the group on hundreds of concerts and university residencies throughout the United States, as well as on international tours. He has served as music director for the Emmy award-winning Damien Escobar, and in this role has performed at a number of events across the globe, including a performance at the 2013 Hip Hop Inaugural Ball hosted by Russell Simmons and honoring Barack Obama. A sought after freelance musician in New York City, Josh has performed, recorded, and collaborated with popular artists such as Solange, The Sugar Hill Gang, David Byrne, Sufjan Stevens, and Courtney Love. Welcome, Josh, and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, looking forward to doing this little, little talk discussion. Um, yeah, so we'll get into some, some text, some words very quickly. Um, I first thought I just wanted to start off with a, a short but minute long um, music um, performance and then we'll, we'll jump in. It's gonna be two seconds to 
Switch my setup over. All right, we'll come back to that. So let's get into the talk. So art uh, imitates life, and life imitates art. And in a lot of what I see, music imitates visual arts. Uh, I feel, you know, we, we come out, and as, as we're, we're children, we have, um, you know, we have a good sense of, of course, our hearing and stuff like that and, and seeing but our, but sorry, our, our visual senses are are so important just off the bat, and then you know as even as a musician, I notice that um you know my ears are still developing today to hear different things, to um, hear different nuances and in, in, in sound and such, and whereas you know my eyes have definitely led the way throughout throughout you know my career and in my, in my life in, in musical ways and and in and in non musical ways. So I think that holds true a lot in, in my art form, um, which is mostly violin area. Um, but I want to kind of back up a little bit in, in time to talk about some examples of this before we kind of get to, to contemporary uh, versions of, of regionalism and what that means to, to, to me. Uh, let me find my notes here. All right. so. In kind of classical music nomenclature, we kind of divide our time here into a, a few big kind of periods. Um, you kind of have your, your, your Renaissance period, and then your Baroque period is kind of where, you know, we figure such as J.S. Bach. Um, <laughs> like that guy, um, kind of start to be coming on the scene. And we have, you know, a lot of the music that we start to listen to, you know, today and it's, it's very, very popular. So if you're kind of your Baroque period, your classical period, it's like Mozart. Um, then we kind of move over to the more romantic period, starting with Beethoven, getting to, you know, big, bigger things, kind of big operas, like Puccini and stuff like that. Um, then our kind of our big kind of contemporary period, and of course within this there are tons of little uh, variations and little little tiny little little corners here um, for different specialized things. But um, in terms of like dates and stuff like that uh, in music, the Baroque era is about from like 1600 to generally like you know the death of J.S. Bach in 1750 uh, or so. Um, but it, it was always interesting to me that in in the art world, there, uh, say there, the art, visual art, Baroque period is a little bit before that. And some Baroque artists, like you know, like, like Caravaggio and guys like that, who are um, you know associated with this idea of Baroque, this um, you know, this uh, what's the Portuguese like the unpolished pearl type of art, type of music, uh, kind of came first, and then the music kind of follows. But you know, there's still. Uh, people kind of concurrently uh, making music and making art in the in the day. Obviously, it's it's a little bit less interconnected as we have today in terms of like, oh, I immediately know what happened at the Oscars last night. You know, I live very very far from LA just because of you know technology and stuff like that. But um, 
nonetheless, there is this like kind of following along. Um, so in Brook, like art, we get this um, this kind of realism. I think it's uh it's it's hard to imagine with the ears of someone from you know 300, 400 years ago, but um, it's like a like a like a rawness. It's like again like it's, it's namesake that that unpolished, uh, misshapen pearl. Um, so things like counterpoint, and uh, which is like the um, the happening of two or more independent voices at the same time, um, are very 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 common in in the musical baroque. Things that are a little bit jagged, um, these kind of uh, not dissonant, but the you the, the we 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 begin to have dissonance. Sorry, not dissonance in maybe what today's ears might view as dissonant but dissonant in the ways that like someone you know who has been had really nice wonderful tuned interval uh, kind of boring chant renaissance stuff you know very perfect intervals that don't um you know evoke such you know pictures as you know dissonant things do like seconds even if they're passing um, so, you know, so now we start to get those types of things in the music, kind of, again, emulating this art that's been, been happening. Uh, and then, yeah, as we, uh, I think there's a, had a really nice, nice quote here by uh, Rousseau, um, who himself was also a musician, but he describes Baroque music as being, um, is, let me put some of this. Baroque music is that in which the harmony is confused, overcharged with modulations and dissonance. The song is hard and unnatural, the intonation difficult, and the movement constrained. And again, we are very far removed from this stuff, so when we hear a lot of this music or even see some of the visual art of the day, it's like, yeah, this looks like, this looks fine, like whatever, like, I don't really get in a, in a, you know, hot and bothered over this music, but again, we need to kind of put ourselves in the day and age. Um, so I don't want to spend too long there, but, you know, moving forward in time, um, you know, in art, we get to the, the art, the, the visual art, neoclassical era, which, you know, folks are kind of harkening back to like, you know, the Greco-Roman type of things. And this is totally, um, parodied in, in the music world when, you know, things like balance of form, um, just like kind of elegant phrasings, very, 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 very clear cut period structures. Uh, you know, there's like a question, there's like an answer. It's, it's very boom, 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 boom. Not a lot of surprises there. Um, you know, this, this return to this, this classicism of, you know, Greco-Roman types of art and those things about the form of the body not coming into, into the music. Um, you know, fast forward, we get to romantic stuff. People start getting like, you know, really into a lot of stuff. Um, there's tons of, we can, you know, we can spend a year um, there, but just want to kind of touch on a couple little things. Um, so as we get a little bit towards in, into the 1800s, 1900s, um, big move, even movements that don't necessarily um, constitute big kind of uh, massive structural units in music history are still super important. Things like Impressionism. Um, you know, all these kind of brush strokes and ways of playing with light. Uh, I think we can play a little bit of, uh, here's some, doo -doo -doo. so composers associated with, you know, the, 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 big, the big two in our world are uh, Ravel and Claude Debussy. Um, here's a little Ravel for you. And, you know, this just kind of, it definitely evokes it is directly, um, you know, influenced by the paintings and the artwork, you know, the Nave Parisian folks of this time period. And as you can hear, there's just a ton going on. It's not so much about the um, the melodies, like we heard with a little Mozart example a couple of seconds ago, um, but just these these textures, the type of sonic worlds, and that's what we're kind of represent, you know, orally based on the visual uh, stimuli. Uh, now we're moving on, moving on, moving on, and to, now we're in the the good old 20th century. We can get to the topic of of, of today. 
So, of course, there's all kinds of wonderful stuff, art, you know, and all these periods kind of going on. And today we're going to talk about this, um, this, uh, this art of regionalism. So a little bit of uh, background for my, myself. Uh, I want to start um, this and I'd like to say that and with, with some hedging, I am, I am no art historian or, um, you know, scholar of the artistic world. I find it, it's super interesting. And of course, I love, you know, taking in um, art that other folks, I'm, I'm no artist myself either. Um, but, you know, learning is, it's fun and it's super interesting to see these these connections that that are here and there and, and everywhere in, in all of our artistic disciplines and of course the world we, we live in because that's why you know we do this um so that is all to say that i'm i'm just i'm just a guy with, with, with the violin musing on some things that i, I found are interesting in these uh these circumstances so um yeah this is not a uh this is how this is and blah 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 blah, blah type of type of type of party anyways um, so when I came here um, to do uh, the, the the Grant Woods residency, I I wanted to kind of take in um, you know first like the the surroundings like the city uh, of Iowa City and yeah the state uh, it's a place I haven't spent that much time with um, previously, but I did also want to you know pay take you know out of out of respect to um you know the the position and the the namesake and also the the art i want to do a little research into not not just the the state and iowa and my surroundings which and the other project i'm presenting is um based on that but also um uh, mr. mr grant wood himself um now of course i've seen uh, american gothic and that, that stuff in in, in pop culture and, and here and there but I had to do a little bit more digging when I went to um, Cedar Rapids. They had a nice uh, exhibit of his um, earlier this year. And it was introduced to just more of his artworks and also just this, this concept of um, regionalism. And as someone who's not a scholar of visual arts or someone who's also studied very, very, very little bit that, of that in my, my own personal kind of academic background, uh, I was, um, you know, I was introduced to a whole new um, term and a whole new movement of art, which I didn't even know existed. Uh, that was very fascinating. Um, and you guys all know, as uh, attendees of the Standard Lecture Series, far more than I do, um, the the work of, of of Mr. Wood and this content, uh, this um, this this um, this world of, of regionalism, which is a little bit. And again, I had to really kind of think about and chew on the definition and what this really meant and find out what it meant to me and also how I could, you know, maybe how it, it works out with some of my own art, how I could kind of work with it in, in different ways and, you know, just kind of viewing it and also uh, noticing it in, in other places, just as, you know, we view the influences of um, impressionist art or baroque art or impressionist music or baroque music in music of today um, or maybe you know to use the impressionism example someone maybe not from from France but is still you know taking this 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 feeling this flavor and, and uh, inculcating their, their their work with it so this concept of, of regionalism as a rejection of the abstract and a you know kind of celebration of man's link with 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 nature um and also just you know the, the kind of uh patriotic of sorts you know to my understanding uh nature of it and just kind of celebrating you know the the heartland the homeland here in you know, out here in, in in the midwest you know it's we're away from you know the coasts and those those bustling especially at the the time of 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 this 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 movement those just crazy probably really dirty bustling um centers of 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 commerce and like tons of people on top of each other and you know of course like art and stuff like that and you know of course rejection of like you know um some european french art of the day that is em embracing the more ab abstract things and as a musician this really um is 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 strange to me because you know we've been talking about the the music following the art like with all these examples and you know countless countless more examples down that down that rabbit hole but you know for an art form 
to reject the abstract that struck me as very interesting and very uh, strange because, you know, as the music tends to follow the art, um, music is very abstract. Like it's, you know, of course we can put notes down on on pieces of paper like, like, like so, but even that, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's pulling things out of, out of the air. And if one's, you know, consuming music or taking it in, it's such an, it's not a very concrete experience. Like even the, the, the science of, of sound waves coming into like a room and rever reverberating off of, of the structures that, that create the room and then meeting people at different, at different parts of their, you know, their, their, their ear and, and all, you know, all those things with refractions. Um, that's just so interesting to me. And it's just, it's, it's hard to divorce oneself from that abstract nature. Um, however, there are some things one can do um, to embrace the, you know, the, the, the spirit of this um, type of art. And I, I, would, I would, I would imagine um, one is um, the, the kind of patriotic kind of nationalist um, sentiment of like, all right, music, here in in the midwest um uh, and when you know what do folks think of when they think of the midwest they think of you know agriculture um uh, you know farming values like you know this is where the 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 um you know the fee the fuel for the for the rest of the the country comes to like you know, we grow the corn here we ship it out to la and new york and then made it and it's you know the, the heartland the heart of the the, the nation um so that's kind of getting into an, you can uh, rewind back to the beginning. Uh, that was a short excerpt of a piece of mine that is uh, dedicated to that and constructed with that in, in mind. Uh, it's a piece called Zandi, Zandi, depending on your uh, Latin pronunciation. Um, it's a fantasy for a solo violin and electronics. It's about 17 minutes long. Um, that's just a very short minute long excerpt and it's it's based on an experience of mine I, I, I um, did some time in working in agriculture um, not necessarily in the Midwest but you know I feel like America has has many many Midwests in different parts of the of the the, the, the country um, but a, ver a rural area and Vinny Ocom or, or the imperative to, to, to come is a, uh, a, a a cow call, a herding call for uh, the the cattle, um, and also in the electronic track you can hear. I mean, and they would call the cattle in in English, so they would say, "Come cow," which you can hear in the electronic track. And this piece is based on that. Just uh, this very kind of concrete image, even though it's music and it's going to be abstract, but um, not any not, not any kind of um, abstract feeling. But the 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 actual um, episode of you know calling a cow, calling the the herd to to come together, um, and also is specifically based on a specific incident where a cow did get lost and then kind of come comes home. Um, so again, that's just a short kind of little little um, foray into that uh, realm of the the non abstract by using the abstract. Um, so if we go that kind of back to our our, our um, to the the time period, um, you know, composers like uh, like Aaron Copland, Bernstein um, were composing music that was in this kind of uh, vein some of you know these are kind of like the the american composers now that we have um we are able to have that as, as americans because you know so much of this music classical concert music is happening over in europe and now this time you know you're starting to see things like you know the the big philharmonic societies of, of new york and, and, and philadelphia and boston and things like that chicago uh come to fruition and of course we're getting a little sense of american art music um you know i guess jazz music is still in the in the, in the, the popular realm yet it hasn't been recognized unfortunately but you know we, we we get when we get it and at this point we're listening to stuff like this let's pull up a little aaron
So this is the little um, Copeland, one of his most famous pieces, the Appalachian Spring. Um, again, you can kind of feel in the harmonies like that, that kind of hearkening to kind of like folk music, American type of thing. These very open sonorities with like kind of fifths on top of each other. Um, it really opens up like the big wide spaces that one encounters out here in, in Iowa, in, in the heartland, in the, mid, in the Midwest. And in my own work that you just heard, uh, again, trying to evoke some of that um, American fiddle time type of music and what that means, because I feel it's, again, you have to find, find, the, find the, 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 the people in the, in the, in the music to kind of tell the story. So that's definitely a big, a big part of it, um, you know, for myself. Uh, and getting that kind of that like that American sound, especially like of the people, so like some kind of folk aspects. So you know, myself coming as, as a violinist, I did most of my growing up in, in Nashville. So a lot of the um, you know fiddly, folky stuff is very much a part of my uh, vocabulary and musical vernacular. Uh, great. So that's just you know, some of the example of just some folks who were doing that in the time period, as we see, like, even if, you know, these terms aren't necessarily like codified, you can look them up like in, you know, in the, in the day of, you know, Mr. Mr. Grantwood and his contemporaries, um, you know, there's still sentiment and popular sentiment in, in the country, um, you know, outside of wars and stuff's happening in America that's never happened before. Um, so again, we now we have these these artists, Copeland, Bernstein, you know, West Side Story. These these things kind of coming out of out of this this sentiment um, for the the rejection of the abstract. Now, as a kind of counter in the music land, a lot of um, you know we're kind of we in 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 Europe. Um, and this time, a lot of things are, you know, we have your, your second Viennese school, and there's like an embracing of um, kind of 12-tone music, which is very, very kind of mathematic, um, which, um, you know, to me, that seems like a less abstract thing, even though orally, if one heard some of this music, which I can play for you a little bit right now. Um, uh, Here we go. So this is some music of, of Schoenberg, you know, moves is coming out of, you know, uh, in Germanic areas. Um, a lot of the, his processes are, you know, in the romantic row, but using more kind of mathematical means of producing the actual uh, aural content. Um, and, you know, as we heard, you know, I'll give you a couple seconds to just take it in. But a very, very different type of music than um, Mr. Mr. Copeland is doing over here in the Americas. And this is, you know, I also believe, you know, especially with the, the pro-American sentiment of, of the day um, and, and just an embracing and a rejection of that even though the abstract nature is, is, is tricky as musicians. Um, great. So I wanted to share a short, another, another short example of another work that is not an American work, but a, uh, a, a contemporary piece. But it, again, as I stated a few minutes ago, how you know, we draw on these, these time periods and these elements of, of art, um, they, don't, they don't just, you know, we don't just leave them behind in, in the musical world. At least, you know, you know, forget everything and you know, move on to the next thing. Um, these elements, where you know, mankind's particularly, mankind's link with, with the earth and nature. Like, I don't think that's, that's going anywhere. Um, but capturing these these kind of values of of nature and just like you know, simplicity, uh, in 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 a good way, in a constructive way, I think is very important. Uh, so this is a, a an excerpt from a piece by an, an Irish composer and it's it involves uh, a tree uh, I can I'm not really great at sharing files but I can uh, 
show a picture of, the, of said tree, for bear and sister, and it, so coming from a, a work of art, uh, of a physical object, and also a, a, a Thomas Hardy quote, um, his northern breast and brain grow to some southern tree, death is not the, and also a Murakami quote, death is not the opposite of life, life but an in, innate part of it. Um, this is a piece called Arboris Eremus. We are the trees. Um, blah, 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 Latin today. Sorry about that. Um, and why would I pick this this thing by an Irish-born composer? Um, well, it struck me as, uh, again, the link with with nature in this sense, like, you know, we, we are the, the title of the piece, we are the trees, is... is um, is you know it's very very tangible and in the construction of the piece the composer makes these kind of branches um physically with the music you can see there's little cells in terms of how the music is organized and the performer is supposed to do some some looping some improvising uh throughout this um with said cells um as as like a tree would kind of grow which is a a concrete thing that we all we all see we see trees outside kind of grow and, and come and, and go um even though it's you know an abstract thought we, we are getting to the the mental space of abstract ism but, but even mr the the poetry that is is based off of um by mr hardy um in that in that land of uh art predating the music um thomas hardy kind of predates the um the 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 regionalist kind of period but he is definitely like a, a realist of of his own uh re regard just you know across the pond and stuff like that so you know these things are are, are happening people are having thoughts uh, about you know the world they live in and and the art they want to make whether that be literary or visual or uh sonic um, you know, sometimes at the same time, sometimes separated by a continent and, you know, a few years, but uh, kind of all getting the same place. So I'll share a little bit of this uh, work, Arboris Eremus. And uh, yeah, it's, it's um, as, as I play it, try and imagine, um, I'll try and make it clear the, the different branches of the tree kind of growing and branching off and becoming their own thing.
All right. So an excerpt from uh, that one. Oh, I lost the thing. Where is it? Uh, here we go. Oh, thank you. All right. So yeah, an excerpt from Fanola's piece. Um, and yeah, again, it's it's so hard to diverse, uh, diverse, uh, divorce ourselves from that the land of, of, of abstract. But I think the composer does a really good job of at least like outlining like the solid parts of this is a tree, a tree, you know, of of of, of life, of 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 hearth, of of of, of, of fuel, and like a tree should do in an ideal situation. It it grows, it kind of sprouts branches, it goes places, it does all these things. The tree should go, and you know, we, tree never loses sight of you know. I mean, yes, you know, uh, everyone who has allergies knows that, of course, you know, the trees reproduce and they they spray seeds everywhere and they go other places. But you know, the actual tree vessel itself, um, the the becomes you know, you don't does not become broken from itself, and that's you know, with some of the looping. Um, is like you know this branch that it continues to grow and it, it develops and it, it goes does something but it's um it's still it's still part of the tree it's still there it's not um going anywhere any any anytime soon so that's um one nature um route I wanted to explore um we got the the flora and the and, and, and the fauna today so it started off with um, a piece about you know, the cows. And that part of you know this this this, this wonderful like the, the the countryside as as it were that we we inhabit a lot of us and enjoy, um, and that was some trees, and the last little thing I want to talk to uh, you know put, took the little excerpt from is another piece of vine, and this one involves uh, the air like the the birds like that part of of the the equation because I feel these things they all kind of feed into this um this this type of art this um this like real real kind of regionless type of flavor which is just you know like the farms and maybe maybe not even like the of course there's the beautiful works but not even the most beautiful aspects of such even so it kind of you know relates to some of the the, the baroque stuff we're talking uh about but um this Last piece is a an older piece of, of mine, um, specifically about a bird, and again in a very kind of concrete situation about a bird falling, um, and you know coming to terms with its particular fate after said uh, fall. Um, it also involves some some sound um, works, uh, to just to kind of kind of get ourselves in in the mood. Um, so someone, someone recently just had an interview recently, and someone asked me a really great question, and it was, um, how how do I personally uh, take in music? And I thought that was great because then, and I, you know, it's one of those things where there's no uh, right answer, depending on, on who you are. One can, um, you know, listen with the score and be very, um, you know critical um same way with like the vis uh, visual art like you know you can have like the uh, be looking for the, the 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 technique of the artists uh are these brush strokes you know nice are they sloppy whatever um same with the, the violin playing or trombone playing or whatever is going on um and i i said you know one of my favorite ways to um intake music i went to a really wonderful recital uh yesterday the, the box cello suites and i had such a wonderful time just like you know closing my eyes and just like letting the music of you know the, the cello just like you know just do its thing it's just it's just so beautiful and of course um structurally the um the structures where the music um takes place in is so important um as a Call back to our our Baroque conversation and and uh, and the um the art driving the music, like you know back in those days, you, like you have your your your, the, you know, your Catholic Church is like the the pinnacle of you know society that it's like everyone's thing, and you have these wonderful um just incredibly ornate um structures architectural structures built for the 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 glorification of of, of God, and that, of course. You know, the music happens in those things. We have all these wonderful Bach pieces to be performed in these wonderful, you know, structures um, that, you know, if, if we had a different situation, we might not have that music because, you know, we have these, you know, the art and architecture really just drove that, um, you know, J.S. Bach, sign all those things, 
whatever it says, whatever the German is for for the beauty, for the glory of God. Um, you know, that's it's super. It's directly happening because of that. So, so um, you know, kind of closing my eyes and taking in uh, the music, the art, whatever it was. I, I like to do things with a lot of visuals too, but um, sometimes it's good to just um, take in the the sound. So the last little little thing, I'll play a little four or five minute little kind of concluding thing to kind of bring us to the uh you know the birds the heavens part of, of this um little little talk um bird fell i would invite you especially we're on zoom too you know you can um you can turn turn your screen off you know kick kick back um and maybe just find a, a kind of calming uh place in this little piece and then i would love to you know open up the floor for like some questions about um this other stuff and yeah and all right let me grab this is on viola let me just grab that real quickly all right all right one more little switch
All right. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, me trying to zoom you in. Got a lot of windows on here. Uh, oh, yeah, I can click on the thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. And yeah, thank you for having me. Would love to open up the floor for questions about stuff. And also, even though this is super fun to chill in my bedroom and talk about stuff and uh, kind of play some stuff, we would love to see you all and your friends and family next week, um, Monday, 7.30 at Stark Opera Studio. There's a little link down there in the, in the chat. Um, it will be myself along with eight other eight, eight far superior and amazing musicians with three amazing dancers. There'll be some lighting stuff. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be way cooler than this. Now this isn't cool. I'm having a great time, but, um, I really hope to catch y'all there. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be a blast. And, uh, yeah, links out there. 
Uh, it's, it's another Iowa-based project based on the uh, the day the music died and, and some of that music. And again, really, really, we're leading into Iowa this year and, and, and very excited about it. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Josh, and thanks for sharing the link to your event on Monday. Um, if anybody has questions, please put those in the Q&A box and we'll get those asked. Um, I'll open it up. I have one, and as people come in, I'll read off the questions that they submit for you, Josh. Um, as you're kind of starting to write your music, uh, you talked about some of the visuals that you were thinking about um, kind of very broadly at the um, some of the characteristics of regionalism. Um, when you're writing art, how does it kind of come together for you? Are you thinking about the visual as you're writing or as you're writing, does that kind of uh, manifest itself as the kind of notes are coming together for you? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, I think there is a, it's like, a, I feel there's like a little bit of a, a leap of faith um, one kind of takes. Uh, when it kind of maybe embarking on like a, a compositional venture, um, it's like it's like when you're knowing when you know how to s float or something, but you have to. There's there's like, there's some like kind of intangible little area in in between. In music, we have things like uh, it's like it's like when you're learning music and you like sort of know it, and then you you know it, and there's like some stuff that happens, but it's like kind of hard to be like, hey, yeah, that 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 area where it kind of happens. So I think in, in that area is where it's like, all right, you know, I think I, well, I would think maybe of like, you know, pictures or like stories. Um, and then the, the, the way it's kind of hard to describe for me to articulate, um, uh, you, use your words, Josh, um, to, to, to you and folks is that, that, that weird idea. I, th I feel like a lot of artists might, um, might, uh, support that, that theory that there's the, you know, there's the, the 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 process, and of course, you if you if you I, I think very structurally oriented um, composer, I think it's very form is very important. So I tend to like you know establish that, and then it's um, yeah that 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 magic in there that that kind of um, propels some of that stuff, which is which is just you know just being informed by by stuff in your surroundings and like whatever the, whatever the topic is and and life and stuff. I think. Um, as you were doing some of your research into Grant Wood, looking at his paintings and looking at other regionalist artists, were there any artworks or parts of artworks that stuck to you um, after you were looking at them that you kind of just kept thinking about? Yeah, I haven't thought about it in a while, but like now that I was, uh, for this little lecture thing, I was like, the one um, in the museum, it's the Rapids Museum, and uh, I'm really bad, like, um, with the titles of, of pieces, but it's like a fairly big work and it's like so beautiful and there's like so much like in it, like, you know, with like some rolling hills and stuff like that. I'll have to, um, uh, I probably, you know, we have this machine in front of me that does all this cool stuff. Um, I can probably find it, but, um, but yes, there, there is a specific um, picture that I, I, I have when I think about this because I remember that I was like, this is so beautiful. I never, um, I can't believe I never knew, knew about this and that was um, for, for me. Um, so I can find it, but um, but yes. Um, while we get to the next question, I'll see if I can. Ah, uh, yes, I think it is. I think it is young corn. Yeah. I really like, um, really like that one. Yeah, great. Um, we've got one question in the Q and A box. Um, so it says, "Amazing, thank you, Josh. Really enjoyed hearing your music." Could you mention again the name of the Irish composer that composed in response to the tree? Oh yes, her name is Fiona. Put this in the chat. Fiona Maryvale. Yes, she's wonderful. Um, Irish-born, living living here, and doing very cool things. Um, and you talked a lot about. Um, Kind of high art or kind of like art with a capital A in the response to music and um, composing. What other forms of kind of popular culture or visual culture, kind of broadly speaking, do you draw from as you're writing? I mean, I I, I like the radio and of course, <laughs> pardon me, <clears throat> um, group listening to all kinds of music. Um, so like you know, 
like I think like pop culture is very Im- important to me. Um, like it's I think folks when you know, when people are just I really I, I feel like I have a disdain for that um, that attitude where people just like that that willful ignorance of pop popular culture. Like oh I don't know who whatever Beyonce is because I don't listen to that. Um, I think it's like so ridiculous and uh, <laughs> and you know that that exists or you know whatever so like because it's you know it's popular it's you know we have you know warhol like pop art it's like it's it's a lot of people consume this and if millions of people are like doing something it's like all right i'm not saying it's right um because we see millions of people doing really awful things in the world but you know it's like let me look at this at least particularly like art artistic things i should say um you know so even like i'm not the biggest like country music fan but i'm like oh a lot of people like this let me like check some of this out and then I like, can find things that like resonate with me. Um, but yeah, so I think, yeah, like just like the pop world and, and of course like our culture, like not necessarily like the, the pop in terms of like, um, uh, like music and art and stuff like that, but just like everyday things happening to people like now, I think are, you know, super important in, in, in the art making process when you just take take it all in. Well, thank you. Um, we're coming up at eight o'clock. So I want to respect your time and everybody else who's joined us tonight. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to share your music with us and take us through some of the new stuff that you're working on. Um, everybody check out Josh next Monday um, at 7.30 at Boxman. And Everybody have a good night. Thanks for joining us tonight. All right, y'all take care. Have a wonderful night. Stay safe and see you.